Hello and welcome to A Homespun House. My name is Molly and I am the creator behind A Homespun House. And it is fall. I could not be happier. Um, I know it's been a while since we last spoke, but we just relaunched A Homespun House October 13th here in America. So I have been busy, busy, busy in the best way ever. I wake up every morning so happy to be dyeing yarns, creating new things. Um, I'm feeling so full of ideas, seeing as though it's been almost four months since a homespun house was, you know, since I was last creating things for a homespun house. So I'm currently downstairs in the kind of the homespun house um, home base, I guess you could say. I'm sitting right now in our stock room. It's a rather large room where um, there are two desks, stock of yarn, um, sock sets, kits, just single yarns, tonal, speckled, variegated, minis, and then there are two tables, two work tables, a couple of shelves. It's still a very raw area. Um, I'm enjoying it. The space is phenomenal. It's amazing. So we launched a homespun house here in America, October 13th, like I said, and you guys, you guys made my heart melt. I cannot say thank you enough for all of the people who were as excited as I was. I felt like um, to pop on over to the web shop and buy some super amazing yarns that, you know, I put my heart into and um, I've just had so much fun dying again. I cannot tell you. So, um, and even talking right now, sitting in the stock room, it's just so inspiring because I'm seeing all of my yarn and I have it all displayed so you can see it everywhere. Um, next to me, I have some tonals that I've dyed up for minis that I'm going to put into some sock sets and some kits and they're so autumnal and beautiful. Um, gosh, they're, they're just wonderful. I can't wait to see what you guys create with those. So I have been busy making advent calendars. Those are coming along. Um, I would say they're halfway finished. They're, they should be shipping out the first week for sure. And November, my advent calendar just arrived in the mail from Maker's Haven, who is Amber. And I think it is a 12 days of Christmas. We did a swap. So I'm not opening that until December 1st, I think. I'm not sure when I open it. It could even be the 12th. I'll have to check on that. But I will be vlogging this year. My husband and I, we did it last year for Vlogmas. And it was so much fun. It was, we had so much fun doing that together. So that's not far away at all. Um, and we're both really looking forward to it. I know Roberts mentioned it a couple of times and um, he said he, he can't wait to start making those videos together and, you know, creating memories and sharing them with you. So um, I'm going to actually start off this episode by showing you what I'm currently knitting on. It's been a while, so I think I have a couple of finished objects to share with you guys. But the first thing that I am knitting on is a pair of socks for my grandpa. He just had his 86th birthday, um, October 17th. And we went over there and you know spent a little bit of the morning with him and my grandma. And it was just, it was really, really nice. So I'm knitting him a pair of socks for Christmas. We're having pretty much everyone over to our house on Christmas. Robert's parents are flying in from Germany and um, they're staying here for two weeks. So that is, I'm overjoyed. So um, yeah, I want to knit a couple of people some hand knit socks and my grandpa is one of those people. So I decided to use Arne and Carlos Perfect socks. Uh, this was Robert's idea to do a sort of Scandinavian style sock for my grandpa because um, he is almost 100% Norwegian and he really loves Norwegian things as does my grandma but I'm knitting my grandpa's socks so these are for him and um, I don't have the ball band otherwise I would kind of show you how it's supposed to look but seeing as though I'm already at the heel I think you get a pretty good idea of how the sock is supposed to look um, it's very different. I've never knit a pair of Perfect socks where I had gauge, match, 
exactly as it's supposed to be on the ball band, never. And this sock looks exactly like the photograph. Usually it kind of marls up a little bit differently and knits differently, but this is the exact sock pictured. So I cast on 64 stitches on a size 2.5 millimeter needle. I almost always knit men's socks on a two millimeter needle using 72 stitches, but I wanted to use a gauge that is very, very stretchy because uh, my grandpa, he has quite a bit of water in his legs and ankles and feet. And so I wanted to knit something that has a lot of give. Because of that, I'm going to be knitting a heel flap and gusset because his ankles are where he has quite a bit of a problem. And I want to knit quite a long heel and then um, decrease very slowly on the gusset so that it's very simple for him to get over his, his heel. And I think that this will be big enough that he can get it over his ankle. I hope. I've knit him a pair of socks before and I'm pretty sure I did it to the same gauge and needle size, etc. that I think these, um, this stitch count will fit. And I did the same exact thing with the heel of the last pair of socks that I knit him as well. So I am using Knit Pro Zings for this. I talked a little bit about this on my Instagram stories a few days ago. Um, I love Haya Haya Sharp Needles. They are my absolute favorite. I love them and I will be selling them in the shop soon. So double point circulars, um, fixed as well as interchangeables, Haya Hayas, they're my favorite. I wouldn't offer anything but at the moment. I mean, you know, opinions can change and there might be some time that I don't like Haya Hayas at all. But for now, I love them. There's nothing that knits better than a Haya Haya Sharp, in my opinion. So I could not find my 2.5 millimeter Zing Haya Hayas, and so I decided to use the Zings. It was definitely strange at first when I started to knit on the um, Zings because the point is so blunt compared to a Haya Haya. So um, they're totally fine now. I'm not minding um, knitting with them, but it was definitely an adjustment period when I first started. I wasn't the biggest fan of them and desperately missed my Haya Hayas. Now, I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying it and I can't believe I'm already at the heel because I've been knitting on these for, I think, two days. Um, I've been storing these in my Little Bobbins DPN Cozy, which I love her, you all know that. She's one of my best friends. She's wonderful, if not way more than she seems on, on her podcast. She's just such a kind and amazing person, Danny. And I have this in my Sandy by the Lakeside project bag. She gifted this to me and it's one of my favorites. I love the simplicity of it. I love the fabric. I love the sturdiness while not being overly sturdy. Um, I feel like it's just a really great, also fashionable piece. We have just finished having lunch, hence the change of scenery. I've made myself a nice, warm, warm cup of coffee. I've put a little bit of fresh cinnamon inside of my coffee, um, just because I love the flavor that that gives the coffee. Ruby is taking a nap. She's my youngest daughter. And Elodie is playing with a friend just right next door. And I am sitting in my creative space. This um, is a room in our home that I have claimed for just personal inspiration outside of a homespun house. It's a room that I can sew, knit, draw, um, read, really do anything that my heart fancies. Um, Elodie and her friend, our neighbor, have used this room for doing some embroidery. I recently taught her how to do embroidery, not AOD, she's done quite a few pieces, but um, the neighbor, they've been having a lot of fun drawing and then embroidering their drawings, which I think is so special. So um, I have quite a few embroidery pieces from AOD that at some point, once we have gathered quite a collection, I will go ahead and um, create something with. And then um, our neighbor, Lola, who's AOD's friend, I will probably help her to sew something with that, whatever she chooses. Um, so 
it's a beautiful fall day outside and you'll probably notice that the light is constantly changing just now the sun's coming out again just simply because the weather does not know what it wants to do it's snowing it's hailing it's raining it's sunny it's gray it's kind of one of those days but i love it so my coffee's a little too hot to drink hence why my glasses are fogging up as i drink but it's keeping my hands warm because I have constant chilly fingers. So I have been, now that autumn has rolled around the corner, um, I've picked up my Pluma Tea Shawl, which is a pattern by Melody Hoffman of Be Mandarines. She has a podcast. She has a wonderful Instagram feed. She just put up a gorgeous um, little vlog. I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. I know it's gorgeous though because everything she does is just that. So. I'm looking forward to cozying up and watching that a little bit later. Probably while I work on the Pluma Tea Shawl because it is such a cozy knit and one that I frankly cannot wait to wear. So I am knitting the Pluma Tea Shawl out of a homespun house yarns and I am knitting this out of our Fresh Sheets colorway. I'm using Gold Stellina for this knit and I am using our Mohair Silk um, in fresh sheets as well for the body of the shawl. I have this finished. I've had it finished for some time. It's just the stretchiest, most luxurious garter stitch pattern with these beautiful eyelets. Um, I This is one of my most enjoyed knits um, in a while. Uh, when I last knit on it, it was it's just so much fun. It's hard to stop knitting on it. And the pattern isn't designed for a fingering weight held with a mohair, but I'm just in such a mohair phase that pretty much any shawl or garment that I have in mind at the moment to knit, I want to be held with mohair. And um, maybe I'll remember to talk about that in a little bit, but I do have a shawl and cardigan or sweater pattern that I have in mind to knit with some, some mohair yarn along with a fingering weight yarn. And I hope to cast that on pretty soon. So um, the Gold Stellina is one that I love for the shawl because it's it's so simplistic. The colors that I've chosen to knit this shawl in, that the Gold Stellina along with the halo of the mohair just adds the most beautiful, magical effect. So the contrast color that I've chosen for the Pluma Tea Shawl is again a Homespun House Rose Gold colorway. I am using this in our Gold Stellina, and then I've paired it along with a strand again of our Mohair Silk in the Rose Gold colorway. So I do have kits for this up in the shop again. I put them up for those of you who want to knit a Pluma Tea shawl as well and who love the colors that I've chosen to knit it in. So those are up in the shop for those of you who wish. You can choose if you'd like to knit it in Gold Stellina, Soft Sock, or Merino. And then it comes, of course, with your um, matching skeins of mohair on the Rose Gold and the Fresh Sheets colorway. I had those up in the shop uh, before we moved to America, and um, a lot of people started to knit the Pluma Tea Shawl along with me, so that was a lot of fun. And I know that there were some people who um, were sad not to get one. So for those of you who've been hoping to knit a Pluma Tea Shawl in the Fresh Sheets and Rose Gold colorway, along with mohair, that option is available for you in the shop. The next thing, well, the, the next three things actually that I've knit are all finished objects. So the first one that I have finished is a pair of socks. I am quite sure that since we last spoke I had not finished these socks. This is a pair of DK weight socks that I knit for my grandma on merino tweed and um, yeah I knit these for my grandma. These will be a Christmas gift for her. I'm sure she's watching this <laughs> so she knows ahead of time. There is no way to avoid it. Um, and yeah, I think she's going to love them. I don't, she has one other pair of DK weight socks knit by me. It was the Twas the Night Before Christmas by Danny George of Little Bobbins, who I mentioned earlier. And um, yeah, so these are for my Grandma Sue for Christmas. So I have Grandma Sue socks finished 
And like I showed you earlier, I have Grandpa Bakken socks currently on the needles. These socks are knit out of a one-of-a-kind colorway. And now that I'm saying this, I definitely remember that I have not shown these to you since we last spoke, simply because I remember knitting these on a couple of knit nights um, since I last podcasted. So. so yes, these are very cozy and I think there's nothing kind of more cushy than DK weight socks, especially if you don't wear house shoes, which I'm almost positive my grandma doesn't wear house shoes. She does. I am lying. She does. She wears house shoes. <laughs> They'll be cozy nonetheless. So the next finished object that I have cast on and finished since we last spoke are my Professor McGonagall socks. So this is yarn from Nomadic Yarns. It is 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. And I love this colorway. I initially started to knit these socks for my grandpa for his birthday. Um, I think that the leg is too small. I, I kind of did the normal stitch count that I do when I'm knitting my husband, Robert, a pair of socks. And just because of what I spoke about earlier about the water that he gets in his legs, I think that these socks wouldn't have worked. So I think it worked out for the better that I did not finish these in time for my grandpa's birthday. And I ended up knitting them the size of my dad's feet. So I would like to give him these socks for Christmas. Um, what started for my grandpa ended up three quarters of the way for my dad. Um, and I think that this couldn't be more perfect like I was starting to say because these are really my dad's colors. He is definitely a very, very um, jewel toned person, I feel like when he's, wearing shirts they're usually this jewel toned green or this plummy purple he wears grays and just um, colors like that so these colors could not remind me more of my dad um if there was some sort of mustardy yellow or you know deep copper orange that that would be great too but i think these socks um are perfect for him so I knit these pretty quickly, I would say, for me, um, with you know how, how little I knit. I kind of went on a rampage of knitting these, and I think they took me a total of probably, probably two weeks, and I think these are a male 11 um, sock for my dad. So I'm sure that these will fit him, though. The final thing that I have finished is the cardigan that was kind of nameless as to who it was going to be for. And I knit this out of the A Homespun House Merino Cashmere Base. It's a base that um, was definitely a treasured base while I lived in Germany. It was a customer favorite. I very, very rarely uh, did clubs on the Merino Cashmere Base. It was always a super um, special time when I listed colorways on the base um, and it's definitely my favorite base of yarn that I've ever come across um, with hand dyed yarns with any sort of yarn in general so um, when we moved here I had saved up a skein of Weasley's Wizarding Weasley's Wizard Wheezes which was I think the July's Harry Potter a yarn club colorway it came with a really really cool acid pop charm and then I put it with double dare which is this just fantastic vibrant pink fuchsia colorway and um, I decided that I would design a cardigan similar to the featherweight with a little bit of color work these are not slip stitches this is color work um, as you can see Next time, there will not be a next time, but if I were to knit this again, I would definitely do slip stitches. I don't know why I didn't think about that when I was knitting this garment. I, as you can see, I knit it Fair Isle, which didn't really work out because it's a cardigan. Um, it is a pattern that's done in a way that you have to cut the yarn every single time you change colors. So I ended up having a good about 300 ends to weave in at the, the band here. 
which was okay. It was way less overwhelming than I imagined it to be. But so this is going to be for Adodi for her birthday. She has a November birthday and she adores this cardigan. As I've been knitting on it, she loves my featherweight cardigans. And so it's a joint collar where it goes down through the where button bands would be and then up across the neck, um, the same exact style as the featherweight. So I'm so happy this is finished, especially because it was just based on trusting myself and I would say pattern writing skills, although I didn't write anything down. So there's absolutely, absolutely no way that I can recreate this um, cardigan at all. So, um, but that's okay. It doesn't need to be recreated. It's just something special, a one-off that I made um, for AOD. And I like to make the cuffs. This is one thing that I notice about a lot of patterns is that cuffs are always so huge. I don't even remember how many stitches I cast on for this cuff, but I cast on very few so that it is, even once it stretches out, not tight because that would be uncomfortable, but definitely not a loose fit at her wrist. I want it to be something that, you know, cuffs her wrist nicely while still being able to slip over her hands. Um, and then I think I added a third of the amount of stitches as soon as I finished the cuff to get up to the arm. So I love it. It's turned out so beautifully. Um, I, I really could not be more pleased with the way that this turned out. There was a time when I was very nervous that the body of this was going to be way too large. And um, if you've watched previous podcasts, I'm sure I, I'm sure I would have spoken about that. So um, Weasley's Wizard Wheezes was a one-off. It will never be dyed again. And Hopscotch is definitely in the shop. It's a colorway that, that I adore. I have been working on a sewing project. And that is a project that I have been making since AOD was inside of my belly. <laughs> well, I know she wasn't in my belly, but you know what I mean. Since I was pregnant with her. And it is such a special piece. I remember slowly gathering these projects. I remember looking through Pinterest, looking for different patterns for beginner quiltists. Um, and I just remember cutting the pieces, feeling so pleased with myself. <laughs> for what I was doing and sewing them together. Um, gosh, it's such a crazy time in, in my life because I've always been very creative, but there was just this time when I was just overwhelmed with creativity. I just, my body was just filled with it and it's all that I wanted to do was create and it was so, so, it was like a, a new birth. Um, of just of a, of, a, of a part of myself and so um, all of the fabrics while so many of them are not fabrics that I would choose the way that the quilt is lined up it's so beginner sewist um, it's such a special blanket and it's so crazy to look at it now seven years later and um, be able to give it to her as a gift. Uh, I still have to finish doing up the quilting on top of the blanket. I'm about two thirds finished. And I do have to do um, a little bit more sewing on it. I have to add a little bit more fabric is what I mean. And then I have to do the binding, which I'll do by hand. And um, then it will be finished, but It's very, very, very exciting to give her this blanket for her birthday. I'm so excited, I can't even tell you. So we have spent just a really great time outside, like I said. Our neighbors are wonderful. 
Um, we've had my parents over quite a bit. My nephew has been spending pretty much every other weekend at our home. Uh, we were just at a fall festival the previous weekend, went to the apple orchard, went and looked for pumpkins, saw a really fun magic show, a puppet theater. Um, there are just so many wonderful things going on. The school that the girls went to, um, a mother who has children there or a child there, invited me to a craft night at the school, which was really, really, really fun. Um, I'm hoping that on the next podcast, I can share with you what we made that evening because it's something that I want to make with the girls. Um, but I think we'll do that a little bit closer to Christmas. So. Um, because it was Christmas related. So I, we're, we're really settling into our home really, really wonderfully. Um, we're very slowly adding new additions to our home because as you know, we didn't take really anything with us. I took some items from my craft room. I took a bit of stuff for, you know, my work, the studio, um, a homespun house. And other than that, we've, We've had to um, choose everything um, for how we want our house to look and be and feel. So um, it's been a lot of fun. We definitely feel very simplistic in the way that we have our home just because it's easy to breathe that way. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's, it's been great. I hope everyone is having a, a great start to their fall and um, I'll chat with you soon. Bye.